Santa Marta is growing in popularity as one of Colombia's top beach destinations, although it's often considered Cartagena's poor little cousin. Well, I just came back from a trip there, so let me give you a quick rundown of what you can expect from it. Need a place to stay? Masaya Santa Marta is definitely an option to consider and the dorms go for about $14 a night. The hostel is honestly beautiful and it feels more like a hotel. I was quite happy with the dorm setup but they also have tons of private rooms. Complete with two pools and a fantastic restaurant on the rooftop serving you incredible food and drinks, there's seemingly nothing wrong with it. But as a solo traveler, I will say there didn't seem to be many opportunities of meeting other people. The hostel is so big that everyone's just kind of spread out all the time and the staff doesn't really do a lot in terms of collective events to bring people together. Again, it really just feels like a hotel. Now, if you're traveling as a couple, I think Masaya Santa Marta is the perfect option for you. As a solo traveler, I would probably be trying somewhere else next time. Although I did get to enjoy some amazing DJs and bands that play on their rooftop. The first morning there, I attempted to go for a cheap breakfast at the local public market. There really weren't that many food options and I ended up having a simple overpriced meal. Probably got the gringo prices on that one. If the market is popping, you can go for a short stroll to see what they're selling at all of the stalls and stuff. My next stop was the Malecon or Boardwalk and I walked through some of the side streets and really got a feel for what Santa Marta is like outside of the touristy city center. Make no mistake, Santa Marta is busy with tons of cars and motorcycles honking all day long. <laughs> I also noticed buildings with Spanish colonial architecture that have not been revitalized like the ones in Cartagena. Santa Marta just hasn't seen that much investment yet. My stroll along the boardwalk definitely didn't take that long because it's literally just a 10 minute walk. And the beach really isn't that impressive and seems to just serve as a port to the town. It was a really hot day, so I decided I needed to cool off a bit. I'd read about a cafe in the historical city center that's kind of like a backpacker haven, serving all those Western style foods that we crave when we're on the road. So I decided to go check it out and it really delivered. Ikaro Cafe is a cute little place with good service and amazing food. On a hot day, it's the perfect place to take a load off since they also do cold beverages and you can enjoy the gringo vibe while bumming some of their free Wi-Fi. I definitely do recommend checking out Ikaro Cafe. That also gave me a chance to stroll around the touristy city center for the first time. And I sensed a drastic change from the streets that I'd seen earlier that day. All of the buildings are revitalized and super colorful, acting as a backdrop for all of the foreigners. I then took myself on a self-guided tour through the city center and definitely made the most of all the incredible street art that is found around that part of town. One of my stops was the Museo del Oro Tairona or Gold Museum. Since that's a free attraction, I definitely recommend stopping by and I saw everything I needed to see in just about an hour or so and then I was off to enjoy the rest of my day. Messiah had a great band performing on their rooftop that night and later I went for a stroll to see the town really come alive at night. There's a lot happening in Santa Marta at night and the nightlife options definitely suit everyone's needs. I also want to recommend to you another fantastic restaurant called Lulo Cafe Bar. I went there later that day and man, oh man, have you ever seen an arepa piled up like that? This one was sort of shrimp ceviche flavor. I would say they are a must go when in Santa Marta. As you may know, I'm a full time budget traveler and although I get to see incredible places in all of the countries that I visit, what also happens a lot of the time is I have to sit around and watch everyone else visit other cool places that are just outside of my budget zone. And unfortunately, this definitely happened in Santa Marta because that is a prime spot to visit the Tairona National Park. 
However, my good friend Ashling did visit the park and she was kind enough to send me some tips that I want to pass on to you here. Visiting the park can be a little tricky because you can either go on a day trip there or you can stay overnight. Whichever one you choose, what is important is that you stay at a hostel that is just outside of the entrance so you can leave your big backpack at the hostel and just take a small day bag for your trip to the park. Staying close to the entrance of the park also means that you can arrive there at 8 a.m. when they open and that is essential since it's a three hour hike into the park and a three hour hike out. Not to mention the park closes at five so to enjoy all of the beaches and cool sites it's really ideal that you arrive at 8 a.m. It's suggested that you visit the park over the course of two days, but for this option you also need to arrive at 8 a.m. because they do provide some accommodation at the park like hammocks and tents, but those tend to run out super fast. They can be gone by like 9 a.m. Visiting the park for just one day feels really rushed with all of the necessary hiking. And it also does rain a ton in that region, so you might have to just wait out the rain at some point. As for me, the highlight of my trip to Santa Marta was when I went to visit the main Inca waterfalls. It was incredibly cheap and easy, my favorite combination, so I decided to produce a whole vlog on it. And you can check it out now by clicking on this link here, so I will see you in the Minka waterfalls in 3, 2, 1.